everybody to our uh, new bag designer series. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy this one. It's relatively simple, but you're going to have a, uh, a beautiful result. So um, today I'm just going to cover a little bit about the features of the bag, um, a few tips, things that we're going to do different. I'll show you the materials that I have selected and I'll show you the hardware that is needed as well. So let's dive in. All right, so introducing the beautiful Paulette bag. This is from Shambhala. I have Sammy's permission to, uh, to do this video, of course. Uh, this bag is medium size. It's got a nice, it's soft kind of slouchy, but still uh, firm enough. It's not gonna fall on itself. Um, it's got a beautiful pleated feature here on the front and the back as well. I'll show you how to do that, really pretty. It has our favorite piping there. I will show you how to master piping. It's not hard, and uh, this pattern makes it even, even more easy, so I'll show you how to do that. It's got a beautiful gusset, not too big of a bag as far as the width, and then on the bottom, if you want, you can mix up the bottom and put a different color panel. I'll do that in my sample bag as well. And then we have the special hardware that I had talked about. This is from Bringberry, and I'm going to show you how to use this hardware to create a very, very simple shoulder strap. Um, I think the hardware really elevates the bag, so if you can get a hold of this, great. But I'm going to show you an alternate strap as well, an alternate hardware. Of course, you can just follow the pattern if you'd like. So inside, oh, well, we have this top zipper that is, uh, it proves challenging for some people, and um, it did for me at first too, so I'm gonna make it unchallenging as the uh, steps go on. Um, but it's really, it's not hard, and it's uh, a really nice bag closure. And inside we have, actually, what do we have? Huh, there it was. My little show off pouch that I made. And, oh, tassel, gotta have a tassel. We'll make a tassel. So inside is a very nice wide bag. It can hold a lot. I have put a, uh, a zipper pocket in mine right here. I did not add a slip pocket to this bag, but we will add a slip pocket to our um, sample bag. So that is the features of this beautiful soft bag. And we're gonna have a blast making it. So let me put my stuff back away. And I'm gonna show you the alternate straps that we're gonna make. So this is, you probably recognize it, this is the Sweet Juliet bag. It's just stunning. This bag is from Maggie55. If you don't have this pattern yet, I suggest that you get it. It's just a, uh, it's a bag designing course in itself. So, but I did not have enough material to make the straps the way that Sue uh, wanted us to. So I improvised and I used this two-tone strap, which I love. And I'm going to show you how to do that on uh, this pattern as well. So, beautiful bag, like I said, since I'm showing off the bag, show you all the fun stuff. I love the side detail of that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, nothing about me. So, let me show you what I have picked out for my bag. You won't be too surprised. What we have is, I have the charcoal and tan mora uh, vinyl. This is from Emmeline's. It's uh, it's just so much fun to work with. It's got a great uh, texture. It sews up beautifully. So if you haven't tried it, I do suggest it. Um, it's, I think she has it in about six different colors. These are my favorite, so you may have seen them on other bags as well. And this doesn't require, oh, big, big, big factor I missed on the bag. Very minimal interfacing, so that's also a, uh, a huge bonus for making it bad because we're only going to interface the sides with a little um, bozel and then that's it. And then inside, interface a pocket. So very low interfacing, which means less time ironing, and we all love that. For my lining, I'm using this decor weight fabric. Of course, it's leopard print because I love it. This is from a friend of mine. She knows who she is. This is, um, does not require interfacing either, which is another bonus. So I'm pretty excited about that. I do, just in case I wanna line my pocket, have some pretty uh, quilting cotton for the uh, zipper pocket, possibly the 
uh, slip pocket. I haven't decided that. And for interfacing, I'm going to use, like I said, on the side, I'll use the uh, Bozal in our form. This is double sided. So, because it is, I need to put a layer of woven fuse on top of it, otherwise, it will goo up my iron. Uh, I also like how it all kind of sandwiches in and stays nice and neat. So, those are my materials. Um, go ahead and after we round up here today, get yours selected and we'll kind of get that going. Next, I'm going to show you the hardware. Put that here. Get the hardware. All right, so what we have in no particular order, we have our top zipper. I cut 10 inches more than is required. I always do that so I have a lot more room to turn the bag and not have it get in the way when I'm top stitching. And then I always have about 10 inches extra for a zipper pocket for another time. It's just me. And then we have the zipper and the zipper pull, obviously, for the interior zipper pocket. We have a zipper end. This is from Bags by Cat. Now she goes by Fireweed, I think. Sorry, sorry, Kathy. And we have my name badge. If you have one, go ahead and get it ready so you have it for your bag. I'll show you this last. We have our hardware from Bringberry. These are available now and uh, they are just uh, so pretty. I just love them. So if you can get these, great. If not, I'll show you an alternative besides what the pattern suggests. Let's see, and a couple of strap ends. I don't like raw strap ends. And of course, a tassel holder. In that way, gotta have a tassel. For our alternate strap, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna use this hardware here, just a couple of uh, one inch D-rings and a lobster clasp. You could just put the uh, strap straight on the D-ring, but I don't really like how it rest on a curved structure here. So this is an alternate strap. I will show you how to do that as well. Again, you can just follow the pattern if you want, but I wanted to show you how to make that cool two-tone strap and might as well attach it to the bag. Now I only can attach one of these uh, hardware to the bag. I'll figure that out once we get there. I'm going to put all this back and we're going to talk a little bit about the pattern, maybe a few more things you might need. I'll put this here. Now, the pattern is super, super easy. It is, and you'll be amazed on what you can, what you're gonna make from a relatively simple pattern. Um, so, Sammy's done a beautiful job, as always. Uh, my own personal preference, I don't like cutting on the fold, especially with vinyl, so I've taken the main piece and I just cut it so that I have one big piece. Nothing special about that. As far as interfacing, like I said, we're going to use foam only on the gusset and then on the bottom, the bottom piece. That's the interfacing that we'll be using for this bag. The bag comes with this connector. You can use this connector or I'm going to show you an alternate one um, for our double, we call it, contour strap. Um, so simple, you'll have this thing cut out in no time, which is going to be our goal for the next video series. Um, I'll show you. I decided I'm going to do uh, a zipper overlay on the interior of my bag. And because you know I love my new Cricut, I cut this out. I also cut out a couple of different connectors. So again, you can use what you like, follow the pattern. And I thought maybe, I'm not sure yet, but I went ahead and cut out a little square. I'll put my badge on it. It might stand out nice on that tan mora. So just a little things different for you to think about when you start cutting out your pattern. You will need some. This is uh, 1.8, I believe it is 1.8 millimeter, or is it 0.8 millimeter? I'll put it in the files, what you need. Uh, piping cord. It's actually used in draperies, but this is now my favorite. This was also a tip from Sue. Um, I like my piping to be on the thin side, not be on the big chunky unless the bag really warrants it. So this is what I use now for most of my piping. Uh, you can buy this on Amazon. I think it's, I don't know, like $12 and you'll get a lifetime supply. So get your uh, piping cord. It is, uh, I think, 1.8 millimeter. I'll put it in the link. You will need 
some double-sided tape. This is the half inch for your piping. I use this instead of glue, it just goes faster. And if you are inclined to uh, do your special cutouts, like I did, you might want to use some edge paint. So this is the uh, Angelus brand, and it's like a leather paint, not edge coat, leather paint. It's about $3 for this, and then somebody in our group turned me on to using, uh, after it dries, then using the finisher. That ensures that it uh, will have a nice seal and hopefully won't stain or if it gets wet. So I do that now, and I, I like the finish, so thank you, whoever said that. This is about $8, and I'm sure I'll never use it all. So I think, I think that is it. The bag is going to be um, beautiful. We're going to have a lot of fun learning how to do the piping, the top zipper, um, doing two different straps. Um, of course, when we turn the bag, we're not going to turn it through uh, a zipper hole, or it will turn out through the lining, but we'll bring the lining up through the zipper pocket so that we don't have a visible internal seam, kind of the standard these days, I think. And, oh, one last thing, one last thing. If you want to do these cutouts, I first used some Decaville light on the back, let it cool completely on all these pieces, and then I cut it, and then I edge painted it, what do you call it? Yeah, edge painted. That gives it a little bit more body and it's not so wimpy. So if you have a Cricut cutter, I highly suggest you uh, take advantage of it for these fun little pieces. So, all right, that's it. So your homework for our next adventure is to get all your pattern pieces cut out, get your um, hardware selected, and let's just, uh, jump in and start making the bag. So I'm excited. So thank you very much. Hey, don't forget to subscribe in case you want to be notified of uh, the next video of this series. So thanks so much. Have a fantastic day.